Welcome to Ask Kalefi, the podcast that dives into real-life problems that plumbing and HVAC technicians face in the field. We're your hosts from the Kalefi Tech Support Team. I'm Greg Tubbs. And I'm Dan Furkus. Welcome. We look forward to sharing some stories from our tech calls and using our background and expertise to make your days a little easier. Hey there. Welcome back. Thanks for tuning in. How are we doing, Dan? We're doing good. Yeah. Thanks for coming back, everybody. What's new? Anything? Not a whole lot new. No. I saw that you caught some pretty big bluegills recently. Yeah, I did. Had a fun time out on the lake. Yeah. It's always a good time. Absolutely. You know, we're not all work all the time. We do like to play every once in a while. Yes, we do. Something about uh, catching fish and uh, playing like a kid. It's all right. (laughs) Sure is. (laughs) Nothing wrong with that. It's uh, We are. It's finally summer. It is. We're out of the, the doldrums of heating season. Hopefully. Hopefully. I <laughs> for mean, most of our listening area, at least. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For our Canadian viewers and our Alaskan, Alaskan friends, viewers. Right. Yeah. yeah. You never know what can be going on there. It may still be, still be just buttoning up their heating season. You never know. We're getting a ton of plumbing calls lately. Yeah, definitely an uptick on the plumbing calls. One of the, the calls that I get a couple times a year is someone will call... And they're looking for a way of removing air out of a plumbing system, whether it's recirc or not. You know, maybe the the plumbing system just has a lot of off gassing in it on a well, right? Or it's a system that you know maybe has a recirc line, but they don't have a ton of use, right? You know, low use. You mean a residential home? You think about a residential home, at least my home. All day that plumbing system is sitting there, not being used because nobody's there. So. You know that gives uh, ample time for air to to accumulate in the in the system, right? And I think the most commonly asked or request, the most common request that we get is, "Hey, do you have or can I use your air separator? Air separator?" Yeah, I get a lot of qu- asks about that as well for the five five one. Yeah, to be used in a domestic plumbing system. Yeah, and unfortunately, no. One, it's not low lead. So not low lead, it's not certified for that. So don't do it. Right. Put that coalescing mesh inside. Um, it's a multi-pass device where your plumbing system might now. It, it, could, uh, it could really destroy it. It sure could. So, But we it, do have a device to work in that we do. system. We do. Provided it's supplied correctly, it, it's probably not going to be the best as far as like being installed in a horizontal run you need to have it on a rise yeah it's not a pass-through device it's going to be an air vent right so it's going to let air out that migrates into it it's not going to necessarily separate that air and remove it exactly yeah the plumb vent is ideal for risers yeah to the best of my knowledge it's the only air vent on the market that is approved for domestic systems right it is and you look at you know, a lot of domestic water applications or, you know, especially high rises with multiple risers, you know, those risers, it might not be a bad idea to put one at the top of each riser because that's where that air is going to migrate to. Exactly. It's all going to float up and just sit there and hover. And if somebody doesn't, I think the biggest complaint we get when there isn't one in there is, yeah, I turn on the faucet and I get a big gush of air and it spits at me. Yeah. Well, then... Yeah, that's that's what warrants the use of a plumb vent. Right, sure. right. Yeah, and we and you know what? I get that call a lot, and that's one comment I get a lot is that, boy, we open the faucet and we get a burst of air behind it. And it's not going to totally eliminate that, but it is going to it's going to be better than having nothing in your system for air right. removal, which most domestic systems won't will not have anything for air removal. Sure, and then it can also help prevent deadheading a pump. Yes, it can. I mean. We've seen some smaller systems where they run smaller pumps, and for whatever reason, maybe the pump shut off, and somehow air got in there, and then the pump was turned back on again, and now it's now it's just spinning and getting right. hot. Right, and yeah, dead-headed. You're, you're deadheading and overworking that pump and not moving any water. Right, where if you had a riser somewhere towards the end and you were able to mitigate that air, it, you wouldn't have that problem. Yet. Right, that pump can push through. right. You're not going to burn that out. What's another good one we see? I mean, there's a handful. Boy, there's a lot of topics we have. Yeah. Uh, 
I had another one the other day, mixing valve. I know we just covered mixing valves, but well, yeah, we we just covered them, but we continue to get a ton of questions on certainly. Them. Can the mixing valve, in this case, it was a thermostatic, a 521, can okay. it be installed upside down? Answer is absolutely Absolutely. Yes. Yep. Any any configuration. Yeah. If, if the knob's facing left, right, up, down, it doesn't matter. It doesn't know the difference. It's always going to work. How about balancing? Oh, a lot of balancing questions. Boy. Yeah. From sizing to cross-referencing. A lot of cross-referencing. Or do I need to have balancing? Yes. Yes. yes, you do. <laughs> it would be ideal. Let's just short wait. answer. Yeah, short answer. <laughs> yes, it's ideal to have balancing in a domestic hot water research system, especially one with multiple risers. Now, right. obviously, if it's going all the way out just to hit the farthest bathroom away from the house, probably not so necessary. Yeah, I just had a, a question on a home, and it was a pretty large home, and it had you know a three-quarter inch research line coming back through the pump to the mixing valve. Um, but it had two half inch uh, branches tying into that, and it went to two separate ends of the home, and they were having an issue through one end of the home because the, again they weren't balanced. Okay. So in that one, they actually went back and they put our one sixteen thermal setter, nice, you know, thermostatic balancing valves in. They already had a variable pump, um, and that'll be a perfect, perfect product to get those two two ends of the homes balanced out. That thermal balancing valve, the one sixteen, is. A very nice problem-solving valve. I don't want to, you know, go out there and say, yeah, you can just put this in anywhere and it'll work anywhere. Realistically, you should know what you want for flow going through that circuit. Right. But this does a pretty nice job of taking care of some of the unknown. Yeah, it does. It does because of that thermostatic control and having the ability to modulate the flow rate through it based on the temperature coming back. You know, balancing down as low as 0.35 GPM or as high as 2.1 on our smaller models, uh, it's going to do a great job of getting the water where it needs to be to get both of them to an equal equal temperature. Right, and the fact that it just it allows that loop to get up to temperature and then closes it off slightly just right. so it gets a trickle through, and then just enough to monitor the temperature coming through that. Right, and then it allows the rest of the flow to get out to the further yeah further branches. Well, what else can we speak on? PRVs? Yeah, PRVs, that's always a big topic. Yeah, it's... it's I know we've covered a lot of that, so, I mean, we're kind of maybe a little redundant, but, boy, we just continue to have the calls keep coming in. Yeah, and and a lot of it, I hate to say it, it has to do with either sizing, you know, improperly sized, yeah. and or it's dirty. Yeah, actually, we've had a big rash of them coming back that were dirty yeah you know we do you know and and i had one where you know they put it in and they had issues with pressure control it would creep up o- over time um so they went and replaced it right that one again did the same thing sure and it's like okay guys have you have you flushed off the line and flushed the line before you're putting the prv in uh once you get it in are you actually you know if you're having an issue pulling that cartridge out and cleaning it out right well and I think I've said it too, and I can. I'm always happy to go through it again. But basically, what what we would tell a guy to do is before you install it, go over to the line with a with a bucket, ice cream pail, five gallon bucket, whatever you can fit underneath the, the incoming line. Open it up and purge it out. Right. See how much junk is in there. Right. Yeah. Get the garbage out before you put the PRV in. Yeah. I mean, there's going to be there may be a ton of debris, and there might only be a few specks of sand. Right. You never know. Then go install your PRV, make your settings, and pressurize the system, and, and see how it goes. If you're watching that, that needle rise up, then we're going to question, do you have thermal expansion in that domestic hot water system? Right. Yeah, that... A lot of the time, there isn't. No. Yeah, a lot of time, there really isn't. And so. Then we'll get the question back. Well, doesn't this have the feature where it allows the, the pressure to go back? Nope. Nope. We don't have that, that pressure bypass. It's essentially like putting a check valve in. Right. I mean, it's going to stop any, you know, that, that you can kind of overcome thermal expansion in a system that doesn't have a PRV because, you know, that pressure can move. I mean, it could move all right. the way back out to the street and, and get absorbed there. It's not going to be as big of an issue. But once you put that PRV in, it's like putting a check valve in. Yep. 
it's so not any going thermal any expansion on the downward side of that has nowhere to go. So it's going to creep up. It's going to creep up. It may give you the illusion that the pressure reducing valve isn't controlling pressure. It may trip your relief valve on your water heater. Um, Typically. Yep. Yeah, that's where you're going to find it. Yeah. So thermal expansion, got to have it with those PRVs in there. Yeah, it's very important. How about uh, tank mixer? Any cool questions on the tank mixer? I just had a guy actually installing a tank mixer, and he's in an area where all the plumbing was half inch, and all of our tank mixers come out as three quarter. Mm. Um, so he was, you know, trying to adapt to it to get down to half inch copper. And um, what a lot of you guys might not know is we have a fitting configuration table in the back of our catalog. Um, and I was able to go in there and because the tank mixer uses our one inch union connection, which is, that's our most popular connection or our most common connection is yeah. the one inch union. Nut. Yeah. We use that one inch G thread or straight thread, BSPP, British parallel pipe, pipe. thread, Good. British yep. straight parallel pipe thread, BSPP. That gets used on a lot of our product and we have a huge array of different types of fittings from PEX expansion to press. Yeah, NPT, PEX, press, sweat. sweat, NPT, you name it. Yeah. Um, what's interesting, though, is in his area, a lot of the system, they're smaller applications, smaller sure. homes. A lot of the homes are plumbed in half inch. Wow. Uh, sounds is, small to me. Yeah. But in his area, that's pretty common. So was able to take them back to that fitting configuration table and you know, found the tank mixer in there, and we were able to set them up with a, a half-inch um, PEX Beautiful. connection, tailpiece and connection. So, And he came in, he bought a dozen of them, or he's going to go online and order a dozen of them so that you know the, the next assortment of PRVs he puts in, because the half, you know, he's going to use two per valve, because sure. the half-inch is, I'm sorry, the cold is half-inch coming in, and the hot is half-inch going out, so he can adapt to it without having to use extra fittings. Yeah, so... It kind of goes to show you, if you see something in our catalog or don't see something in our catalog and you're wondering if you can make it work, call us. We're happy to walk you through it. We can give you kit numbers or we can give you individual part numbers. For, right. Direct for you fittings. where to get them. Direct through, yeah. Direct where to get them and get you squared away. Yeah. Our product's pretty versatile. I mean, we've got a lot of fittings to to get to a lot of different applications and make it easier, save you fitting, save you time. Yep. Um, we're happy to help you with that. Yeah, I mean, we're doing pretty good on that selection. For those of you that use a lot of CPVC or PVC, that's not an option for us. Nope. Push fit is not an option currently. Um, not yet. Not yet. It could be down could the road. Be. Could be. It's becoming more popular. We're getting more and more asks for that. Yeah. There's a handful of products you're getting more asked for, so stay tuned. We could start seeing some. I guess things. that's the other side too. If there is something that you'd like to see, ask. Yeah, <laughs> because that's how it. G- <laughs> the more people call in and talk to us, we'll make notes and we we'll forward the email on to the big man. Right, and the big man will go. You know, we keep seeing these emails and requests for it. We're going to have to do something. Right, we're just small enough where we can. Yeah, now, I don't know if I can't guarantee it's going to be a two month or a ten month turnaround, but we're going to make strides to make it happen. No, absolutely. When we listen to your requests, absolutely. Well, I think that's it. It was just kind of a random plumbing topic podcast yeah. today, but it's a good you plumbing know, conversation. Yeah, it's something that just kind of keeps coming up, and we we love hearing about it, and we'd like to talk about it. So, till next right. time, we'll see you next time. All right. Thank you for tuning in. If you ever need help, please feel free to contact our tech support team anytime at techsupport.us at kalefi.com. Or call us during our business hours at 7.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m. Central Time at 414-238-2360.